Hey everyone, so this is my second video on how to get any motion capture file, any humanoid motion, uh, actually imported into Blender and then exported into a .dmx fitting your rig, any rig you can possibly imagine, whether it's like Team Fortress 2, an engineer or a soldier or a Spartan, for example, which we're going to be working with today in Elite, and how to overcome one of the most annoying issues, and I finally figured out how to do it properly. So in my last video, you probably want to watch that one first, right? So today I have a problem I'm going to show you how to address. So I'm going to import a .dmx. So how you get this DMX in here is you go into Source Filmmaker and you spawn, let's say, this Elite here from Halo. And we immediately, after spawning it in S Source Filmmaker, we export it as an animation. So it should just come as a default pose like this, right? Now, my first strategy on how to get this guy into a T pose, which we'll need for later, is um it it does work. What you need to do is you need to make him into a T pose, a T pose in Source Filmmaker first. But that can be tedious because we want these top shoulders to be completely straight, which is a lot easier to do in Source Filmmaker and technically not really practical at all to do in in Blender. But when we bring it in here, um, we're going to see uh, some issues. So this is the new way. You don't need to worry about making him into a T-Pose in Source Filmmaker. Just import it as it is by default. And we're going to get um, something like this. You know? You're know, you lucky if your rig is in T-Pose, but a lot of rigs are not in T-Pose. They are in, especially if you're working with a model that has a horse links or something a bit more complicated that is not easy. You cannot just put this guy into a T-pose. And even if you do, it's going to look a little bit janky. And that's the trouble I had. And I was like, how the hell do I get this working, right? Well, um, it's actually super simple. Let me explain first before we go into the first step of what you need to do, really. Um, you don't need to do this part. I'm just showing you guys here. But if we go into edit mode... Um, and press dot on the number pad, we can zoom in real quick and see that the bones are actually um, sticking out outwardly like, um, like so, as you can see. So that will cause errors when we try to copy selected bones in AutoRig Pro. So that is not good. How do we overcome this jankiness, all right? It's actually super simple, and it took me like a year to get to this point, but now we're here. So... As soon as you import this guy into Blender, right, um, you just want to press, you know, R and then Z, X, or Y, and then type in a number, right, to make him stand up straight like this. It's just more convenient to do that now rather than later. So once you have him, make sure he's selected. Usually I like to just delete everything in the scene, in a default Blender scene. And then go down to export and then export this as a .fbx, all right? So when you do that, there's an option. Let me just uh, find my save location real quick because I got a, a demo file. All right, cool. So we just exported that as the .fbx. And now what we want to do is delete this rig here, okay? and then import that same .fbx, right? So when we do that, on the bottom left, it leave everything default, but on the bottom left, uh, under armatures, make sure you have the same version as me. I have version 2.79 Blender. Automatic bone orientation, check that, and then import the .fbx. Now what this does is it makes the bones look different, but essentially they're the same. Um, but also, they are placed correctly. All right? So, as you will see, there is um, a big difference. Now we're pressing, now we're going into edit mode by pressing tab. And uh, yeah, there we go. So, we're not done yet. So, what you want to do at this point is start going through the auto rig process as you normally would. So let me let me show you guys. Uh, so target, we want to select target, and then we want to import our motion capture file. Hopefully you have it in a .bvh or .fbx. And then make sure you scale FPS on the bottom left. 
we'll import that. And then we're going to press R, Z, and then 90, enter. And then we're going to make sure that is uh, matched up with source and then freeze it. It's okay if you don't see that dialog box. And then we're going to build the bones list. And then I already have my map file, uh, my JMAP file, whatever, or BMAP actually, made. So you might have to already, you know, go through this process. If you need help on that, then make sure to watch my other video. I'll leave that link down in the description. One thing that I miss up on a lot is making sure that the hips has uh, been set as root. And so, yeah, and then we're going to hit, uh, actually, we're going to make sure that these are about the same size or so. Let's make sure we have our T-Pose guy selected. And... Uh, then you can always look up here if you get confused which one you're selecting. Um, looking at the, uh, whatever you call it, the uh, set of animations uh, stuff. And then you want to hit Refine, Rest Pose, and then Copy Selected Bones. My bad. So what I did was I actually entered in wrong BMAP file. Yeah, that looks more right. Okay. So we're going to Copy Selected Bones, and now... Essentially, what we have done is cheated. Now, why can't we just hit apply, hit retarget, and then export it into Source Filmmaker? I'll tell you why. Because when we imported this, when we re-imported this rig, we essentially broke all the bones when we hit automatic bone orientation. As you'll see when I go into edit mode, well, one, the bones look different. I heard that's just a visual thing. But um, it, it does matter because essentially what's happened is that these bones have been, um, they're understood now. Like the engine understands what these bones are now. They're not all janky. Source Filmmaker understands when they're janky, but when we fix them in here, we essentially break it in Source Filmmaker. So in a way you could say there's no winning. There is because now we have the positioning perfect. You see? So it would have been hell to re to to every time we retarget this thing to have this set up in a way of um of having to make sure that this is the exact same angle there's not coordinates we we couldn't type this in it just doesn't have the positional data right so this is the best way that i know of and you only have to do it once all right so Actually, um, now that we have, um, we'll, we'll go back here, copy selected target bones. It should be perfect, perfectly uh, identical pretty much, except for, you know, you might have less bones in your, in your motion capture file. That's fine. Um, but we want to go down here to copy the current pose. You can also do this with uh, control C, but I like to make sure I hit this. Make sure you don't click the paste store pose. So now it's actually been a week since I was recording the other stuff. Uh, I actually got stuck on this part. I thought I knew what to do, but now I actually figured it out. So here is the best technique that I learned. So apparently you can't just save this guy here and just put him to the side and import other stuff. Because, well, I, I always knew that it didn't work, but I thought there was a way to get around that and paste it later and yada yada. What you want to do is um, control... Uh, shift S, right? And then save this, and you'll want to save it as whatever your rig is, whatever your model is, and then maybe just save it pose save. And so once you do that, you'll easily be able to swap back to this file for reference later if you have trouble. And then for convenience, I'll just um, put up my Jackal. Uh, this is actually a new model than the one I was showing earlier in the, in the video. But this is uh, basically the same same workflow as is exact same workflow is that if you have this guy here um you'll just go down here uh refine rest pose uh for you he'll probably you know be in t pose but uh we'll be able to just paste that and then every time moving forward we can just swap between the save pose save dot blend copy that pose and then bring it over here to this one and then, of course, you'll just want to hit apply. Um, I already hit apply, but I'm going to hit it again. And, you know, make sure uh, your, your, all your bones are set correctly. Um, I have frequently had trouble, like even today I had trouble with this. Is, um, 
I got the two rigs mixed up. Remember, most of the time, these are probably always going to be different. Make sure, remember, source is going to be in the motion capture file. Target is always going to be the .dmx export, the, the rig you're going to want to throw um, this, this data on. Now, this one looks a little bit wonky for me because I'm actually having an issue, which I'm glad that I'm actually kind of covering this a little bit, although I won't be able to provide much help. But um, I am having some trouble with um, getting the legs right because there's just not enough bones on the motion capture file to fulfill this jackal model. Um, I'm still experimenting with it. It tends to be a puzzle, and it's probably going to be a puzzle for you guys too if you're working with anything that is not humanoid. With these uh, horse links here, these kind of bones here where um, you actually have to walk differently, you know, in motion capture. And what I do is that you can actually squat and stand on your tippy toes. But I'll come back to this later um, as far as fixing this because I, I genuinely don't even know how to fix it yet. But um, but once you once you refine rest pose, you retarget, and then you'll get this. You should have both rigs working perfectly fine. And then you'll go over here. Hopefully you have the source tools installed. Um, if not, I've left information down here or my other video that has all the proper links and the same versions I'm using so you can you can have this the same experience I'm having. And um, you should have the, the, the bones should look like this, right, on the new one, right? So just so you know. But um, just so we don't get confused, we're going to hide this one real quick, the, uh, the X sends motion capture file. So we only see the data that we're going to get in mo uh, Source Filmmaker that we're going to extract over. So make sure you select that down here. We're going to be under the Scene tab under the properties tab and we're going to roll down here on the very bottom and these these are kind of like the um the assets up here that you can export if you have body set groups you'll see a bunch of body set groups just ignore those make sure that whatever you select this becomes selected here you know because obviously this is not what you're going to want to export so make sure you select this and then you can just name this whatever you want i like to be very specific or maybe name the scene so like let's say uh fight uh which was the name of my lost wolves uh hunters versus spartan fight that was the sub tag i would use and then i would use maybe for this uh jackal walking take one and then what i usually like to do is click away and then click back but i don't think that's necessary to do actually but you um you click on where you want to save it and then just export it as a dot dmx and um it's as simple as that, and um, you should get something that looks better than this because I'm using horse links. But, yeah, so, I mean, depending on your motion capture data, you'll have to do some cleanup here, and that's how you that's how you are able to pretty much force retarget any motion capture into a Source Filmmaker model, and it can be incredibly helpful. It can also be incredibly frustrating. Uh, during the process, uh, I like to think of it as a puzzle because, uh, quite frankly, it is almost every time it's a puzzle of trying to figure out what looks best and what needs to be done. But the fact that what we covered today took me a really long time to get to, maybe other people, it, they instantly knew what to do. But um, I really value this knowledge, and I hope you guys found it helpful. It's taken me a long, long time to get to doing these simple techniques that... Um, effectively get you where you need to be as far as making films and a, a source filmmaker, but also other things because you don't need to necessarily export that as a .dmx. You can export it as a dot, um, well, anything. You know, you can make sure two different files are, are retargeted. That's the, the whole benefit of this. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Um, and I am uh, currently now working on The Lost Wolves Episode 1. I already released the first episode. So if you guys want to see the power of Source Filmmaker as as well as with x -Sense combined, um, then go watch that. Uh, I appreciate any likes, reviews, and feedback. All right. Peace, guys. Later.